Hi, I'm Hideo Beretta here and in this video we're going to see how useful animation layers can be to speed up your animation workflow in Maya, especially when you have to deal with complex animation. I am going to base this video on a simple cube animation so that it will be easier to understand the underlying concepts without having to deal with a complex rig. We will see how to create layers, how to manage layer weights and how to merge layers in a smart way, along with a few examples where these techniques can be useful. This video is an extract from my Twitch streams, which I run every Thursday at 6 p.m. London time. That is at 6 UTC, Coordinated Universal Time. So let's see how animation layers work in theory. So we'll go create a cube in my scene. It doesn't matter if you use, if you do a cube, a donut, whichever, whichever shape works. They will tell me, animate an object going from point A to point B. You're paid to do that, they add. And so you do it because that's your job. They, you deliver this for daily and the director and all the team are like, wow, Medeo, this is, this is probably the best cube we've ever seen. But can we, instead of having the cube going here, can we have it go up there? Or rather they say, oh no, no, today I feel zigzaggy. Can we have the cube zigzag left and right, uh, up and down as it goes to the right? Yeah, we can. And we are pros. So we go back to our desk and we start cleaning the animation and we, we make the zigzagging that the director so much desires. And now we look at it and we go to the next daily and the director is ecstatic. He says, wow, this is the best zigzag I've ever seen in my life. Except my daughter yesterday was watching the work in progress as she often does. And she told me that, I mean, a good director, she said, probably would want the cube to be up there at the end of the animation. That cube guys represent one control of your rig, but a rig has a hundred of controls. So when the daughter of the director says, I want it to, to be up there in a different pose, that might mean a hundred of cubes you have to relocate. And not only the last pose, but every zigzag operation you've done so far needs to be directed at the new target. So now as a, an animator, you're not very happy, but you, you are a pro. So you go back and you're thinking, oh, maybe I could move everything somehow. There are many ways you could sort this out with, uh, with graph editors in the case of a cube. For instance, I could grab the graph editor and I could find out which curve is the up curve. So it's probably this one. I could actually use a lattice to deform the whole animation here, but if it's a hundred of controls and they all move in different axes, then now it's impossible to do it. So what I do is I see that there is an animation layer box and I select the control I want to operate. I create a new layer by clicking on the top right corner of the layer box. The green dot tells me that the current selection is right now on the layer. So the current selection here, the cube is on the layer. I know that because there's a green dot. The red dot tells me that selection is also on the other layer, but is not that layer is not the active one. So that those are the two notions you really need to understand. Then I'm going to say uh, 68, the last keyframe I have, I'm going onto layer one and I move it up and I press S to store that as a key. Now the result is that the whole animation has moved up because the layer works a bit like a platform that moves the animation where you need it. If you set a single key on a layer, you're actually going to just offset the animation in one direction and that's it. But the daughter of the director was really clear. She said at the beginning, the cube needs to be where it needs to be when it was earlier on, because that's the way I liked it. And at the end, the cube will need to be up there. Sometimes you have relatives in a production. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so now we go to frame one and we want the cube to go down to where it was. On animation layers, you see this little button with the forbidden symbol there, the circle with a line. If you click on it, it mutes the layer. So it tells you where the cube was. So I could go to frame one and say, actually it was down there and I set a key. And now the cube starts from down there and it zigzags its way up. So now with a couple of keys, I relocated an entire bunch of controls. Let's suppose they are controls. I relocated them to another area and I kept the zigzag, except the director watches it and his grandma is watching as well. And she says, that's not where the cube used to be because if you click on the mute layer, you can clearly tell it's a different position. So of course I received the feedback as an animator telling me mm, it should be there, the cube should be there, not where it is now. So how can I precisely 
align this cube down to the base layer, well, the top left button on the animation layer box, this one called the zero key layer, if it shows up, if it does, it doesn't want to, but I think it's called zero key layer. Now, I, all of a sudden, I don't remember, but if I click on it on frame one, the animation layer box is going to align that controller to the layer which is immediately underneath. So the zero key layer is something used as some sort of zeroing out device. It's just, it's a gatekeeper. It just makes sure that the animation at that point stays the same and is not affected by the layer. A way to double check is to unmute the layer, to mute it and unmute it, sorry, and now you see nothing changes. But if you go at the end, you mute it and unmute it and you see it changes a lot. So now hopefully everybody is happy with this arrangement and I can sleep well. So now as I press play, my animation play plays through and super happy about it until grandpa comes along. And grandpa says, yes, yes, grandma and granddaughter were certainly on the right track and the director is a good director and nothing to say against the animator, great animator. But I think that what I want to have in there is 50%, actually let's make it 35% between the animation as it is now and the animation as it was then. And this feedback of course comes to me as an animator and being the pro I am, I sit down and I decide to fix this thing for them. The funny thing is that sometimes you go through so many iterations that you even lose track of who said what. You just move on at a certain point out of the pure momentum that you accumulated by doing fixes. Now we want to have that famous 35%. That's easy. There's a weight slider down here in the layer box. Well, if I type in dot 35, now all of a sudden, what I have in there is 35% of that animation. That's really interesting, I think, because as a device, I can really tune down the settings the way I need it, the animation the way I need it. This can also be animated. So if I hit the K button there, I'm laying down a key. In fact, why not try that? I can say, you know what? At the beginning, I want 100%. So I move it up to 100%. I key it. If I go into the graph editor, a new curve is in town. This new curve is called the weight. And this weight, as I go to 68, I can tune it down to dot 35 and there will be an animation on that weight and that weight there, it's betraying me now. Let me just set a key on that on 35 because I don't see an update going on. So I will, ah, there you go, it updated. Please notice this weight also has curves. I can decide with which intensity the weight is also operating. So animation layers are really, really cool. You should definitely learn them because they, I mean, modern, modern animation is based on this kind of techniques. And, and, and even if when you don't realize it, even with games, there, there's a whole system of animation layers in a high-end games. It's not the same as Maya's, of course, but it's there in the game engine. So you really want to be aware at least of the fact that this thing exists. So how many layers can you have? And I mean, how far can you go? It much depends on your computer. The highest number of layers I've ever had was something like 98. Any company that is an outsourcing company for visual effects has a lot of supervisors. There's a hierarchy of supervisors. So a lot of people give feedback on your animation very often. And sometimes you use I use layers to keep track of it. And on top of that, I add my own layers. You don't have to, and it, I don't know if I would do the same thing again now, if I, because now I work in a different way. But up to 99, 98, I felt there was no significant uh, slowdown on a machine which was but in general, my, my way of, of looking at it is once I know the animation works and I think I don't need to tweak it that much, I will actually merge the layers. I will save the file, merge the layers, and then save another file so that I can go back to the pre-merged state because eventually it's going, to lay, it's going to slow you down. The one thing I never do is I never really select all controls of a rig and put them on a layer. That's too much stuff. Even if you have, I mean, if you select all controls of advanced skeleton and you put them on a, on a rig, that, that will slow you down quite a lot. I mean, in, not in animation, but when you merge the animation down, it will take forever. So in general, I keep it to, to a bare necessity. So I just grab the controls I need to operate and I, I put them on a layer. I don't put the whole rig indiscriminately. I would never do that because I don't trust. I think it's too much math going under going on under the hood there layers can be nested i mean 
you can do this kind of stuff. So you can animate the weight of a, of a top layer and animate the, the weight of the sub layer. But I don't recommend you do it unless you know what you are doing. I mean, unless you're sure you need it. They're, they are super powerful. There are also different, different layer modes because they can be offsetting the animation, but they can also be overriding the animation. But in general, they don't kill, they don't kill performance. Now, the question is, how do layers really merge down once you're happy with the result? By default in Maya, they don't merge down very gracefully, I have to say, but that's that's more of a problem with the default settings. So if I merge down the layers by default, I had to reset the tool because I never use the defaults in that window. So if I merge down the layer right now, I get mock-up for a cube. <laughs> I get one frame, one keyframe per frame every frame, which, I mean, I certainly hope that the family of the director is very small because if it's big now, I'm in big troubles because with all these keys, I think I'm going to have some issues tweaking the animation. But luckily, the animation layers in Maya actually work very well. And you can right click and go options of merge layers and you want to enable Smart Bake. Your, your key card is this guy, Smart Bake. That's, that needs to be on. So what Smart Bake does, it, it merges the layers but look at the key, the timeline there. Same keys. I mean, you really have to tip your head to whoever designed this system because it's kind of great. Until we didn't have layers in Maya, we had to animate things in other ways. Sometimes you found rigs which had, I don't know, one, two, three controllers on top of one another so that you ended up having to, you would animate layers on different controllers moving the same joint, if you see what I mean. So there was a layering system, but now you don't need to do that anymore, luckily. Another reason why I instinctively made the key exactly lined up between the base and the animation layer one is because if you do so, you have more chances to get these few keys when you merge. If you start adding keys in the middle on the layer, you're going to introduce new keys probably in the merge. I will try that. So now I have a key in there and it's not in the base animation layer. I want to see if Maya manages to solve it. I don't think it will. You see, there's a key there. I mean, it's not a big deal, but usually when I do layers, I try to align up, to line up the keys to existing keys on the immediately available layer. So on the base layer in this case, just to simplify the keys I will get as a result later on. And also very often, if you animate a controller and then you start uh, um, animating on a different axis, say two frames later, there's a, an evident glitch in the motion. So that's also why I tend to line keys, but it's not really a hard rule and you want to do what you want to do and what you need to do. You just need to be aware of the consequences, but it's your life at the end of the day. If you have found this video useful, please like, subscribe and hit that bell. Have fun. Not to believe it, not to believe it, not to believe it.